We're gonna be doing a 12 by 24 porcelain on this shower. So we're gonna be doing the back wall and the side walls in a 12 by 24 porcelain. We already have the pan done, so we did that yesterday. Today is day four of this remodel. Day one, we did the demo. Day two, we did the plumbing and set the pan. Day three, we uh, got the wall board up. We did some drywall repair. We uh, set the shower pan. So yeah, so the shower pan was set yesterday. We did that first, so the shower pan is done. Now we can stack our walls off of it. So uh, you can do it a couple different ways. You can also do your walls first and then your pan second. And I've done that in some past videos. So, but today I'm gonna be doing the walls after we've already done the pan. So we're gonna be doing a 12 by 24 porcelain tile in a horizontal brick pattern. And so I have two lines set up here. Uh, the green line is the center line. And then we have our offset because we're doing a 50% offset. We're gonna be using leveling clips in this. So that's one thing a lot of the tile manufacturers will tell you the most you can do a stagger is one third of the tile. But when you use clips, you can do a 50% stagger. Well, I say you can, that's maybe subjective. Uh, we will do a 50% stagger because what happens is as you use the clips, they will, uh, they will take any bows out of the tile Anyway, so we're doing a 50% stagger. That's why I have the two lines here. Uh, where to start? So that's, that's a great question. I get that a lot. When you're doing a tile layout, where do you start? You do full tile at the top, you do full tile at the bottom, do you do full tile somewhere else? Well, I'm gonna show you how we figure that out. So first thing I'm gonna do is do a story pole. Now a story pole is just a stick that has the tile layout on there so we can put it up here and see where our cuts are gonna be. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's go outside and we'll get our story pole going. I just got a stick. You can use any stick that's uh, you know five feet, maybe six feet, seven feet, doesn't matter. Uh, this is just a, a scrap piece of red wood that we had, but you can use any, any kind of wood as long as it's a, as a straight stick. So you just, I got my tile layout here. I got my leveling clips in, my 16th inch leveling clips. If you want a good leveling clip system, go to tilecoach.com. These are very affordable. I got starter packs for them. The wedges, the clips, uh, and the pliers come together. So what I'm gonna do is just um, put a mark right on the grout joint. So there we go, there's one. There's two, there's three, and my Sharpie kind of bleeds and that actually gives me the grout joint. Four, and five. So the, the Sharpie line is gonna give me my grout joint. And then, you know, this is just a scrap, doesn't matter. So now that I got this story pole, this is gonna show me my exact layout so we can go in, let's go check it out. Okay, so when you're tiling to a ceiling, you also need to, to find the high point of the ceiling. You can see up here, this ceiling is all jacked up, it's, but the high point is right here. So you don't wanna measure off the low point because if this, this side is lower over here, yeah, but I've already figured out that this is my high point. We've, we've shot a laser and put a level on it. So I'm gonna be going off of this high point here. So you can see where my grout joints are gonna be. If we go a full tile, oh wait, off the top, we're not going to, huh? Yeah. Um, you can see here, if we go a full tile off the top, that's too small of a cut here at the window. That only gives us like an inch inch cut. I don't really want a little inch cut there. Um, this would lay out good. You see we would have like what, about six inches here. That's a fine cut. If we were gonna go full tile at the top and I wanna see what my cuts will be down here, I can just put a, a mark and then I can flip my stick. Line that cut up. Line that mark up with my story pole. And so that's what my, my tile would be down here. Which is, which is a good, you know, that would be a good cut. But what we're gonna end up doing is, and because this pan 
is angled, you know, it's a linear drain, single slope, so it's high over here, low over here. Uh, what we ended up doing was, why we have this line right here, this is gonna be our first full tile. Here's our low point of the pan right here because the pan slopes down and then it goes up a little bit because the linear drain is right here. We are going to start right there. And I got a little horseshoe spacer because we, we want a, a space down on the bottom. And that's, that's where our, our story pole lines up with the pencil line. So that's gonna be our full tile. And now we can check it as we go up, right? So here, there's gonna be a grout joint right there. So if I wanna carry it up, I just line a grout joint up right there with my story pole. And now you can see as we get up here, now we have a better cut. Oh, now we have at least a two inch cut here, which is better. I mean, two inches, two inches still isn't ideal, but I try not to go under two inches. Once you get under two inches, the cuts look really chintzy. Uh, we're just gonna have to go with that. Um, and then we got a good sized tile up against the ceiling. So up against the ceiling, we, we're gonna have, you know, we're gonna have an 11 inch cut up against the ceiling. So let me just draw a line on there and I'll show you where the ceiling is. So we're gonna have a tile here, have a grout joint right here. board the pencil marks really show up on this tile ready board I did some testing with the tile ready board too I put I um, I just took my fork lift and my my forks are about 24 on center and I put a piece of the board on the forks yesterday when I went into the warehouse just to take it and I could step in the middle of it and the board wouldn't break. And the, R, the RSS board and the Sentinel board, when you put it on there and you step on it, psh, just snapped right through. And Curdy board, <laughs> you wouldn't even try it. That would just crumple. Curdy board is so soft. This stuff is you know, really solid board. And yeah, it takes a pencil line really nice. Okay, so what I was gonna show you is how far off our ceiling is and why it's important to check your ceiling and start in the right spots. So here we're at 46 and a quarter. 46 and a quarter is what we got here. And if we come over to this side, we are 47. So we're three quarters of an inch off in the ceiling. So don't ever assume that your ceilings are level. I mean, that's a lot. Three quarters of an inch over five feet is a lot. So what I was saying is if you were to, you know, base your layout off of this point here, you know, you would end up with a crappy little three quarter inch cut if you were doing a full tile up there. But anyways, when we, when we since we got a good size cut, it's gonna be a little easier to scribe in. Um, what do we got right here? Um, yeah, at, at the bottom of the windowsill, we got five and a half inches, so that's a good cut. We're gonna cut this, this bottom row in first. So we got, we got our tile, we're gonna have a full tile down here at the, the deepest part of the slope and it's gonna get cut because this is a sloped pan, it's not a level perimeter. When it's a level perimeter, it's really easy, right? Because all the cuts will be the same or should be very close uh, if you have a center drain. But since it's a linear drain with everything sloping down, uh, we're gonna have to angle, we're gonna start full and cut it as it goes up. But before we do that, we're gonna have to cut our side pieces for our first row. So we're gonna be starting right here. Uh, I made a, a mark in the middle of the tile that marks exactly in the, in the center of the tile. And I'll put that right on my laser line. And then I can get my cuts. I'll get these two cuts, cut the short side of the tile off. 
Uh, what do you got, Kirk? I went 17 and 3 eighths. Yeah, so 17 and 3 eighths will be the cut. Should be the same on both sides. That's probably a little tight, but um, 17 and 3 eighths. You do have a little bit of wiggle room right here because your back wall is gonna get covered by your side wall. So the thickness of the tile is about a quarter. So you have about a quarter inch of wiggle room. You don't need to cut this in real tight. Um, you know, give yourself a good eighth inch or so. So yeah, 17 and 3 eighths on these two cuts. Uh, we'll get those cut and as soon as we have those cut, we'll do um, the point to point angled cut of these three tiles on the bottom. So we got our two side cuts cut at the 17 and 3 eighths. So this, these three tiles are gonna fit on the back wall. Uh, this is gonna be the top. This is gonna be where it meets the pan. So we got our 10 and a half marked right here. 10 and a half is right here. And then we got our zero. This is where it goes down to the full tile at this point. And then it's going to slope back up an eighth of an inch here. There. There. And I'm just gonna use this trowel to give me my my little slope up at the linear drain here. So there we go, we should be able to cut that and have this shaped to the shower pan. Okay, so when you're lining up an angled cut, because you don't have a you know a square surface, you can't just put it on the table, you're gonna have to angle it. Um, what you can do is just put it flat and then lift up your angle. It's pretty easy to get the starting point because it's, it's touching the blade right here. I can see that. You can, you can uh, with these DeWalt's, it's pretty nice with the chop action. You can just kind of follow your line and just make sure it's ending up exact because we want, we want these cuts to be pretty precise. We don't have a lot of room for air with these. So yeah, just, did you see that curve or shot there? So you can see how the how the blade's gonna end up exactly where we want it, just barely saving the pencil line. Put my chop action back down, start it up. So yeah, still got some chips on here. Uh, this is a diamond rub stone. I think this is 100 grit, 150. 100, 150 grit. It'll help smooth out those chips. So you can see, yeah. So you see I really smoothed those chips out. Um, here, here's what the surface looked like before. You can see those chips. So you can see you can see the chips on here, and this is the rub stone. Almost took all those chips out. There we go. Okay, so we got uh, the cuts made. I laid them back out to make sure everything is in line. Uh, it's it's maybe just a hair off, but it's good. It's gonna be down at the shower floor. I'm okay with it Point to point cuts can be kind of difficult uh, Especially with that blade drifting around sometimes, but I got it nice. I, I'm happy with where it's at looks good uh, So we're ready to install this thing. Let's get going. I Got what I got here is a euro notch trowel. It's it's a half inch and a quarter inch kind of spaced together in this this V notch uh, this is Kirk's favorite trowel for large format tile. Uh, I prefer a half inch by half inch just because I'm used to it. That's what I've always used. But I'll get used to this at some point. So I'm gonna go with a notch on the wall and then a, a skim coat on the back. And 
I'm just going to spread up past our first line. So you just want to get the, the thin set up on the wall. myself a uh, little reference line just so I know about where to come up because I want to do two rows so somewhere right about there Not as good with my left. Good directional trowel on there. So I'll start with. I'll start with. Uh, doesn't really matter because I got the cuts. Cuts pretty exact. I'm gonna go ahead and set them, and then I'll I'll set them to my line after I get them up. So yeah, flat back uh, the bottom every time. Anytime I'm using leveling clips, I always flat back. If you're doing 12 by 24, it's a good idea to just do a flat back on it. Stay clean. If you get little goops of thin set, just just clean them up because you'll end up putting your hand in it or stepping in it and track it in around. So I try to stay clean as I work. I'm going to use a, a eighth inch on the bottom at the pan. That's going to give us a little bit of flexibility. I might need to put a sixteenth someplace, but if it varies a little bit, if that joint isn't perfectly all the way around, it's fine. You can also get these horseshoes tilecoach.com. Very cheap, packs of 200, got a eighths and sixteenths. There's two ways to, to flat back, back butter your tile. You saw the first time I went away. Uh, I actually think it's easier going towards you. I feel like I have a little more control with that. But basically what you're doing here is a bond coat and it's also filling in the ridges on the back of the tile. I need to get a clip in here. First leveling clip. Go right in here.
another leveling clip down on the bottom here. And do my get out of the way for the camera. Yeah, when I back butter, I you see I'm using the flat side of the trowel, so I turn the trowel upside down, get my mud, put the plop of about how much it's gonna be. Then I like to go towards myself at an angle. About there, got my joint red line right where I need it. I'm gonna take four foot level. I'm gonna be putting leveling clips in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just knock down. So I just took my margin trowel at an angle. So that way I can get my level in here without getting it goopy. This is really important to get this part right. I'm a little high on this side, so I'm gonna switch these guys out to 16th. At least this one over here. Because the pebbles aren't gonna be perfect, you know, some pebbles are a little thicker than the others. Are you zoomed in here pretty good, Kirk, so you can see? So yeah, the pebbles, you know, some pebbles are thicker, some are thinner, so there's a little, depending on what pebble you put your space around is gonna make a difference. So that's better. That's better, I'm feeling good about that. I also have I also have these little uh, little wedges, these little red wedges. These are my favorite wedges to use in tile. Uh, when you buy the leveling clips, I throw these in with them too. You can just put those on top of your horseshoe to make real slight adjustments. Yeah, so you just put them right on top of the horseshoe. Just like that. Just a little wedge to bring you up to where you need to be. And we're good. I need a little more thin set right there. Okay, so we're ready for the next row. be doing our, our leveling clips. I like to put them right in the middle. Oh, I should have put one right there too. The next row you will, but you don't need to in this case because you have one yeah, gotcha. up a little bit. Yeah, the next one you put one in the middle and then on top. So yeah, our leveling clips are going to go right here, right here. Basically, you put one at the intersection of the grout joint and in the middle of the tile. Okay, so I got my green line so I can just start with that. Okay, so I'm going on the green line. I'm going to start. Center right that here. puppy, yes, sir. Right here. Full 
tile. Then with this row, I'm gonna put a clip right in the middle. So yeah, so now we got the wedges. I'll just start putting these into the clips. And that's going to take the bow again because these, these tiles are bowed. I'll give you an example here. I put these tiles back to back. You see the bow at the end? Can you see the... I'm, I'm, oh my gosh. Yeah. So these tiles are bowed. They're concave or convex, whatever the correct term is there. Um, so what the clips will do, they will bend the tiles flat. When we put the wedge in the middle, that's how we can get away with the 50% offset, which that's what everybody wants. People want to see the brick pattern because our eye is used to seeing bricks. So yeah, so the clips, then you just take your tool, crank them down. This is like cheating, you know. <laughs> My other video that I showed, I didn't use any clips and I was kind of bragging on it, but I floated that wall and got it perfect. Uh, this, yeah, it's like cheating to me. It's like training wheels, right? Take advantage of it. These clips are really nice because they don't break off. Like a lot of them, the Raimondis that we would use would, you know, they break if you crimp them too tight. These guys are strong. Yeah, these guys, these guys are strong. I mean, you, you can crank the heck out of them and they won't break off. Yeah, really cool. Got that, got that belly out of the middle of the tile. That's nice and flat now. So now that I got my first two rows up, I'm going to go ahead and just check level again. Yeah, so you can make adjustments after the clips are in. You just have to be careful as you lift up because this tile was connected to this tile and I just needed this tile to go up and this tile to stay. I put my level on here so that this tile couldn't move, but this tile could. Make sense? So yeah, now I got that line nice and straight or level. Level all the way across. I like it. So now I'm gonna go up two rows. Or you can use your storyboard if you want. Oh yeah. You're not even pulling tape out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna I got my story pole here, so I can still just flip it around so I use the right side. And I know where uh, two rows is gonna be. I'm gonna have a joint. Yep, just like right that. Right there. Yeah, you see there, I know that there's going to be a grout joint right there. I'll comb my thin set up to this point so I don't have to scrape it off after. Okay, so we're going to be putting the niche in here. Uh, this is going to be uh, the bottom of the niche. I want a full tile up to the bottom of the niche and it's going in this stud bay. So I'm going to punch a hole right in here 
so I can measure my exact distance to the stud so that I can mark it. So again, if this was if this was go board or um, weedy board or something with fiberglass in it, you know I would have cut that and I would have got all itchy and it sucks. But so another plus, no fiberglass in this board. Okay, so I'm five at five and a quarter. That's the edge of the stud on that side. studs are. So I'm going to be right in here on that side, here on that side. So these marks right here are going to be what I need to cut out for the niche. And these are tile ready niches that all ready to go, are already waterproof, just go in with sealant. Okay, so just double checking just to show that full tile is going to be right here, right at this line. The flange is an inch, so I went down an inch here. So that when we set it, the tile is going to come. We want the tile to come right to the edge of that flange. We don't need it to overlap because the tile, we'll show you, I'll show you when we tile this niche, is gonna overlap the face of the tile. So we just need to bring our tile right to the edge of this niche. Uh, so now that I got uh, the niche in, screws off, I put another bead around the edge just to give me a good seal on the outside. Good rule of thumb with this sealant when you're using it is a, a two inch bead when you can get it. And I didn't, I didn't put uh, framing across the top or the bottom because it's just like a, a joint in the horizontal plane of the wall. It's going to be fine with the sealant bonding the, the ABS niche to the wall board. It'll be solid. I'm not worried about it at all. In case you're wondering, uh, thin set mortar does stick to wet MS polymer sealant. This tile ready sealant uh, will bond to wet thin set, so we don't need to worry about this drying completely before we tile over it. Again, so much easier than dealing with all the, the band that Curdy has build up and all that stuff. This is really nice. There we go. 100% waterproof, level, plumb, sealed, niche, ready to go for tile in minutes.
Okay, we got six rows up. We got cut in around the niche. Uh, the way the niches work is I just cut right up to the edge of the niche. I get that question a lot. We cut right up to the edge and then our tile is, and schluter is going to go on the inside. So just cut to the perimeter of the niche and then the, the tile, we're going to set this niche tomorrow. Um, we'll finish stacking the rest of the walls today. But uh, yeah, great, great progress so far. Again, 16th inch leveling clips. These are so much, so much of a help. Uh, I learned doing tile work without any clips at all. And literally, if you moved one tile, you would have to pretty much move every other one. Uh, once they're all clipped together, it acts like one sheet. So you could pry a little bit, add a little thin set behind, and things won't move. So yeah, it's I'm, I'm really happy with this. These leveling clips are great. We didn't have a single one break off, and we got them crimped down pretty tight. Uh, again, tilecoach.com if you want to get either 16th or 8th inch. We went with 16th. This tile, this is a dowel tile, and it's a pressed edge. A lot of dowel tile stuff is pretty sizey. I mean, we were getting a 16th of an inch difference between some of the tiles. So that's why we put wedges in to kind of adjust, and every two rows, put a level up, and then you can adjust with the little red wedges as you need to. But I'm really happy with the progress we got so far. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, next video will be showing how to cut in around the niche and the window and some of the other details. But this was a good way uh, to get your layout, to get your start. And uh, we'll keep, keep on working here. Make sure you're subscribed so you see the other videos. And I love you. I love being your tile coach. We'll see you on the next video.